Anushka, good morning. <laughs> good morning, sir. How are you doing? Okay, it's, it's a late night there, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Anushka, today uh, we are going to discuss on a very, very relevant topic. In fact, I requested you a lot for this and now you have come prepared with this particular topic. Yeah. That is, yes. that is. Uh, uh, I think that was also instrumental in your getting fully funded scholarship direct PhD program. So that is internship, exactly. uh, role of internship, how to get internship and how internship is so relevant to explore opportunities, especially for undergrads who want to go for direct PhD and want to get a fully funded scholarship. So over to you, Anushka, please uh, tell the students what is there today for them. Okay, so just to introduce, I'm Anushka and I'm a direct PhD student in Texas Tech University and I'm in my first year of my PhD. So like many of my friends and the students, they ask, they keep on asking me about how, how did I end up getting a direct PhD position? Uh, because I don't have a master's degree. I don't have a good research, uh, sorry, good research publications, or maybe I don't have any review articles published. So the main thing that I think was like a major role in my uh, PhD application journey that was the internships or the research experience that I had while I was doing my B.Tech, that is my engineering. So that played a major role. And like many of the uh, like many of my students, uh, my batchmates or the rest of the students, they get confused as in how to approach for this uh, internships and how to basically find your research interest. So that is the first step. So I'll just uh, share a presentation and give you a brief overview. Yeah. Anushka, but in the meantime, may I ask you one very quick relevant question here? And that yes, is, sir. many yes. students get confused between having good research experience and having a research publication. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what I understand is uh, professors look for your research background and research experience yes. and research work. They are not much fussy about a research publication. So yeah. input yeah. from you. I mean, if you have a research publication, that's an excellent uh, thing. But mm -hmm. uh, the the thing is, they look for the, your research experience because then you have that particular skill set which is needed yes. for your PhD. So if yes. you don't have the basic knowledge or basic idea of how you work inside a lab and you don't have those skills needed for your PhD project, then I think uh, it, it will take more time to just first I uh, like uh, understand or learn those skills and then you would start with your PhD. So that is a crucial yeah. thing So you have a basic uh, research experience uh, while you're doing your uh, undergrad program. So yeah, that yeah. is the critical thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, Anushka. I think we can uh, start now discussion on yes, this. Sir. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's visible now. So as discussed, our topic is finding internships during BTEC. So like the one of the main thing that comes to every student's mind is why internships matter. I think they matter a lot because uh, if you are looking for uh, good career opportunities related to like PhD or maybe masters, then it can help you in advanced applications. If you're looking for particularly for PhD, you need some research experience. And if you have a good amount of research experience during your BTEC, I think it boosts your application. So the graduate committee basically looks at your CV. And if they find that you have a good research experience, they'll, they'll con consider your application. Then career clarity and then practical exposure. So basically you learn how to apply your theoretical knowledge that you've learned in your coursework, how to apply it in, in the real or practical world. And then it also boosts your CV or resume. So these are the four main reasons I think you should always consider applying for internships and doing internships while you're, while you're doing your undergraduation. Now to go for internships, you need to first identify your research interest. So for example, if you are doing a BTEC in biotechnology degree, there are, there are various fields in biotech itself. So you need to identify in what research, in what particular research area you are interested. After identifying your interest only, then you can proceed for applying for any uh, research related internships or 
it can be in a lab it can be in an industry it depends on you but the first step is to identify your research interest and i think i also was very confused in the earlier stage while i was doing my second year but i think by the end of third year i got a clear idea in what particular research area i was interested i think the main reasons for that is uh, because uh, in my college that is in dy patel we were introduced or we had a lot of rigorous coursework with it, which uh, had a like various different topics it was still related to biotech but they also gave us some gist about bioinformatics then some gist about chemistry some they had some core uh, biological related fields as well so i think you can just figure out from your coursework itself in like what particular topics you, you, that are exciting you the most uh, and then you can consider areas where you excel or enjoy problem solving so i can just remember from my uh, um, experience one of my professors she had given us uh, like given all of the students uh, an assignment it was a very basic assignment to do and she has asked us like what uh, cellular pathways are getting altered in cancer she wants to know and if if a student comes up with like a brilliant idea or something maybe she can work for a review article or a research paper so i was so interested in the uh, in the like learning about the cellular pathways in which particularly in the field of cancer that i started studying books like i started uh, studying alberts from cell and molecular biology so it it uh, it i don't know what to call but i i was so interested in learning that that i referred research articles and books so eventually i got to know that oh this is one of the field that i am really interested in and maybe i can think uh doing my like future work in this particular area then you can attend seminars workshops and guest lec lectures so in our university they used to give various guest lectures and there were different professors from university uh like the universities from abroad so one of the professors he was from ireland he had come to uh deliver a guest lecture and it was also very beneficial because he told how uh, like students work inside his lab and what all conferences uh, they have attended so it, you are just exposed to like uh, what actually uh, like the uh, universities in abroad how are they going with the research and then maybe you can read research papers and articles and then if if you you get interested in some of the topic you can consider that as a Uh, research interest for you also take on diverse academic projects to gain exposure through some assignments that your professors give and you can also work in college labs or join student research groups so we had in our college we had some student research groups so they used to just uh, uh, call us for some help or regarding uh, uh, like in house internship kind of thing Uh, so i used to like keep on asking them if there is any opportunity to gain hands on experience because that goes into your cv and then it boosts your resume and then you can always talk to your professors that are there in your uh, university mentors or seniors in your department and ask them or talk to them to figure out your research interest or area now the step 2 once you find your research interest so uh, for example if you are finding your research interest in studying a uh, cellular aspect related to cancer then the next step before applying for internship is to build a strong resume because that is going to help you for uh, getting selected in the internships now a strong resume so for that you need to highlight any academic projects or relevant coursework and certifications so here while you are doing your btech certifications play a huge uh, like important role and you can do some of the certification courses for free from a site called coursera so there is a site uh, which is called as coursera and they have a lot of certification courses you can opt for the certification courses that you like for free and you can gain those certifications and put it on your resume you can also do cert as mentioned i have mentioned on the second point on coursera by applying for the financial aid then you can include some technical skills that you have gained while doing your btech 
and also do not forget to include your soft skills like teamwork and communication and to build a proper a good resume you have some free tools or apps uh, like canva or overleaf for if you want to build a really professional design for your resume or cv so this was my cv when i applied to internships it was like a basic two page cv i just had mentioned my education background and some technical skills soft skills and then professional experience that i had uh, so i was teaching in a like for part time i also mentioned my teaching experience and then i had done some in house internships i also mentioned that then i had done a lot of certifications Uh, and then finally if you have any accomplishments so this can be like a basic template if you are really interested in applying internships then the third uh, step is leverage college resources now you can always ask for your or uh, reach out to your alumni for any referrals uh, to build your alumni network and always request recommendations and guidance from your faculty or uh, like the mentors or professors that you have in your uh, university and you can also talk to your placement cell if you have in your university and check for internship or if if they have any internship listings and the last step is to apply so now one major question that uh, like students ask me is what is the best time for uh, like to apply for internships while you're doing your btech i think it's always the break that you have that is your summer or the winter break so summer is during may to uh, maybe june or july some some time uh and then when to apply so basically i i don't think many of students apply during the second year because they are not introduced to various courses by the time so i think after you are done with your second year or maybe your third year you can start applying for internships for your summer or winter break so now uh, to apply for internships so there are various institutes specifically for biology icer is a very good option because they they keep on uh, like um, posting uh, advertisements for uh, summer internships every year they keep on posting and like lot of students are getting selected for those particular internships so there are uh, institutes like icers iits nccs pune ncbs tifr so these are some of the common institutes that in uh, like they uh, invite applications for summer internship program and so one of the way is to apply directly through the portal or the website of the institutes and second way that is the most common way is to contact professors directly from any institute and ask them if they have any position available for uh, students to do their summer internship you can write personalized emails expressing that you are really interested in doing uh, the or conducting the research and you uh, also need to highlight that how this internship is going to strengthen your direct phd or masters application so that is the main thing they always look for your uh, long term goals like what goals do you have and so these are the two common ways that you can uh, think of applying for internships so this is a uh, icer bhopal summer internship 2024 advertisement so they had mentioned that the portal will be open from march 20 till april 21 so this is the time you should consider applying for internships so by the time of march you should have your cv and everything ready so the internship it starts from usually it it is from may end to july end so in this two months you get time to do your summer research internships in most of the institutes like icers iits and ncbs so if you are currently like studying in your second year maybe third year or fourth year of bsc btech you are eligible to apply and you directly need to fill the online application form then uh, you have to select at least three faculty advisors that you will be um, interested in working uh, as your for your summer research internship program and then the project duration as mentioned is 4 to 8 weeks between may 27 and july 20 so generally in icers the duration is from may 27 to july 20 so just keep on checking the website 
around March. So they open their applications around March 20th and it goes on till April 21st. Also the selection criteria. So they have mentioned candidates will be selected based on their academic performance and the write up they submit. So you have you need to submit a write up so as to why you are interested in working with this professor and how it is going to help you in your further um, like future studies. So you need to mention your future goals and why specifically that professor and how he is going to help you with your future studies. And other details, so they also, ISAs also provide ISAs and IITs, they provide some hostel accommodation in some nominal or like minimal fee. So per month, you just need to pay around 1,500 for your hostel and they also have mess, uh, uh, mess charges. So you uh, need to pay that uh, minimal amount of fee. And then if you're selected, you will be notified uh, through their uh, application like website and then you can join from me around me so for ISIS they mentioned that kindly do not do not contact the concerned faculty for selection information after applying for internship so you will be directly notified on the website you you don't have to contact the professors uh, like asking if you are getting selected or not and the last thing is be persistent and keep applying if, even if you are rejected initially because I was not getting replies from any of the professors. I applied to around 45 to 50 professors for just my internship thing. But initially I did not get any replies but I just kept on applying and finally I got selected in one of the institutes. So I was doing my summer internship at ISER Bhopal. So it was from May 25th to July. So it was a like a great experience to work with PhDs, uh, like PhD students and how actually research is carried out inside a lab. I got to know that. Also, you should regularly update your resume and please create a LinkedIn profile because in this time, I, I think uh, like professors do check or, or the institutes or the universities do check your LinkedIn profile. So I think it should be updated. Also, make sure that you update your resume or CV. So yeah, that's it for the internships thing. I hope it was beneficial. Okay, so it was wonderful, Anushka. A lot of content in a very yeah. systematic way, very interesting way. And uh, uh, I, I request all the students to again listen to it if they have come to this way and they have come to this far yeah. and they have listened to it. And also, Anushka, there are so yes. many students in India who actually want to go for it and uh, they're connected with us on our various WhatsApp groups. And, uh, you know, I would like you to have interactive session with those students. Yes, so, yes, uh, yes. So yes. that, you know, they will be having some queries and all. And on the basis of this uh, video, once we publish, students will feel like interacting with you. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, now you yourself have traveled that path. I mean, you went to ISC yeah. and training. So that will be very, very helpful for students. So uh, the, that's it. I think this is the uh, this is the important, uh, you know, step in the stage in the uh, direction of exploring fully funded PhD programs or right. uh, master's program abroad. So that brings us to an end of this session, Anushka. Thanks a lot yes. for your this uh, content. Thank you, sir. And Thank I'll you catch so you next much. week again. Thank you.